How did the United States and Alaska at a low price? At the time, the Russian Empire was purely stupid, so it didn't make deal like this. The analysis that Alaska had a lot of resources was also known to Russia at the time because the trade has already been actively conducted. Therefore, the financial crisis was not the only reason. A combination of geopolitical reasons is that Alaska was handed over to the United States because we know that Alaska will be taken away by Britain in time anyway. Then today, we will find out why Russia had to hand over Alaska to the United States at a low price. At the time, Russia was playing the great game with the United Kingdom during the Crimean War. Russia was forced to abandon the port of Petropavlovsk during two wars with Britain on the Kamchatka Peninsula, unable to guard Alaska, which borders Canada across the sea at all. Because it was far from Moscow, it was difficult to manage because it was 7,000 kilometers beyond the Siberia. The Russian had made it all the way to California building Fort Los and even in contact with Spanish forces in Mexico but too far from the mainland they withdrew themselves in 1842. Russia made the decision to sell it to the United States which was a British colony and hostile to Britain at the time rather than being taken away by the British which was colonized right next to Alaska. The downfall of being a Britain was vitally unimaginable to people at the time as well was the fall of the United States today. It was also due to World War I that Britain's national power collapsed in earnest. Someone just don't understand why Russia acted like that because Britain completely collapsed over time. At that time, the Britain Empire was a country where the sun did not set. World hegemony was also held by Britain and for Russia. It was the United Kingdom, not the United States, that had to keep in mind when implementing the national strategy. At that time, it was just a small country on the outskirts of Europe. There is also the Rupertland purchase case that the pressure in the UK is never to be ignored. After the Alaska Treaty, the United States and Canada, which was a British territory at the time, competed against the Rupertland, which was independently owned by a Hudson Bay company like the East India Company in the United States and the Hudson Bay side also wanted to sell it to the United States. But under pressure from the United Kingdom, he was forced to sell it to Canada. In the end, the US missed a golden opportunity to hold most of the North American continent because of Britain. By the time, 100 years after the end of the American Wars of Independence and only 50 years after the end of the US-Britain War, it was likely that the United States and Britain would become enemies again in condition war met. Even 7 million dollars sold in Alaska was well spent on the site of its own railways so it's hard to say that Russia only lost money in the subsequent US to Soviet confrontation during the Cold War if the Soviet Union had Alaska it would have become a land of tremendous strategic asset value because Canada was Britain at the time Alaska was easy for Britain to target and if Alaska crossed it was at risk of being taken away by the British to the east of Siberia, including the Kamchatka Peninsula. In order to avoid this worst situation, we tried to create a middle zone by handing it over to the United States, which was a regional powerhouse in North America. It is accurate to say that the disposition of Alaska to the United States to protect the mainland from the United Kingdom is the cause of this treaty. No matter how hard it is to manage to UCL precious territory, it may be thought that from the time of the enactment to the present day, the central region of Russia, major cities and densely populated areas and granary areas were mostly located in the Western European Russia of the Urals, and the value of the eastern part of the Ural was not so great. It was a time when even the Trans-Siberian Railways was not opened, so it was difficult to keep even Siberia. Better 
along Alaska because it was impossible to move large-scale troops. The only military power of Siberia was that of the Cossacks was, and even the emperor thoughtfully urged the Siberian Cossacks not to create a conflict. The Siberian frontier, which was close to Alaska and reached to the Rand, was also difficult for the people to let out prisoners because they were all reluctant to settle, but it was difficult to carve out and defend the Russian America that exists beyond the infamous Bering Strait because it is an area located further to the east. On the other hand, from the US, it was close to the mainland of the United States, so there was room for relatively pioneering and it took time to slowly pioneer it and the value increased. In the United States, in the 1930s, when planes started to fly in Alaska, proper pioneering gun. At the time, the Russian Empire has constantly supported Abraham Lincoln's U.S. Confederation since the early days of the Civil War when other European countries struggled between the Southern and Northern Federate and also supported the U.S. Commonwealth with resources such as gold. The U.S. had paid back something after the war for this Russian support but gained Russia cash for not and so word suggest that they support Russia in exchange for the Alaska purchase. Russia was already facing financial limitations, so it was paid for the resources it lent during the civil war in exchange for the purchase of Alaska. In the end, it wasn't the level Russia wanted, but this Alaska actually caused the conflict because the United Kingdom and the United States. If you look at the map of Alaska, you can see the Juno region stretching thinly along the coast. After purchasing the Alaska region, the U.S. gradually expanded its territory further along the coastal area. This Alaskan corridor area was called a panhandle because it was similar to a frying pan handle. But as it continued to expand, British Canada was in danger of losing all of the Pacific coast. As a result, the United Kingdom and Canada signed a an agreement with the United States on the panhandle issues in 1903. The boundary definition, which was unclear in the anglo russian agreement of 1825, was clarified and the current border was confirmed. If Alaska had become Canada's territory at this time, it would not have been a structure surrounded by the United States on the Pacific side like Canada is now. At that time, there was a strong opposition to the United States saying that there was no resources and the freezing waste rent was so expensive already we have the burden of a territory that cannot be filled by population it's too much to rule the, the Indian natives it is not adjacent to the national territory today we might think that it would be a waste by a large and beautiful territory and resources like Alaska for only 200 million to three trillion one but at that time Alaska was considered a barren rent and above all Americans had doubled the territory of 50 million gold dollars earlier the four which was the main source of revenue of Alaska at the time was the overfishing of the Russians and by the mid 18th century the Alaskan sea water already in an endangered stage and mid 19th century the United States was still a close a country rather than a legacy. It is a concern in the world situation that the U.S. is trying to return to a closed country. The reason why Secretary of State William Seward thought the land is not to be aimed at resources but to make friends with Russia, remove Russian power from North America, and to contain Canada, which was British territory at the time. At that time, the main enemy of the United States was Britain, not Russia, and the Canadian land directly above it was a bridgehead that would attach to Britain and bring the United States back to the era of colonial rule. From a strategic point of view, the U.S. has chosen Alaska, a good gateway to Asia. In fact, it was almost voted down by Congress, but it was passed thanks to the support of Charles Sumner and the 
the propaganda better of the rule of the Russian called Edward von Stalker. But as for politicians, and Alaska was a negative land for the U.S. until natural resources such as gold and oil come oil came out of Alaska as a decision that Americans couldn't understand at the time. The Alaska deal has given the U.S. to gain the foundation of the Pacific Sea while keeping Russia in check on Russia and blocking the possibility of Britain entering the Pacific with Canada as a foothold while gaining land with endless resources. The influx of gold, iron ore, coal, and oil from Alaska resulted in the sale of only the underground resources buried in Alaska to offset the cost of the purchase. In particular, coal had largest reserves in the world. When they dug the land to build a house after immigrants came in, the gold started to come out and the oil was worth $600 billion at the time. Strategically, geographically, Alaskan land was of tremendous value, creating a military base in Anchorage located in Alaska, which became U.S. territory in Russia and making it a front end base. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union's entry into America could be used as a card to block the advance and to prevent Russia's Arctic Sea monopoly. The Soviet Union, which was the center of the army, was far from the United States. The Pacific Ocean and the Arctic Sea where the Navy and Air Force were relatively superior to their own, so it had to have some disadvantage if it was only to conventional warfare. If Russia did not sell Alaska to the United States and was lost to the British Empire, as feared, Alaska would have been incorporated into British Canada and become Canada's current state of Alaska or Alaska Territory or now incorporated, divided or merged into part of the Yukon Territory or British Columbia. If the Soviets did not sell Alaska and held the hegemony of the Arctic Sea, it is very likely that the Soviet Union had the upper hand in the Cold War and maintained an equal structure. Not to mention a military base, Russia would have become richer with the resources buried there. Russia's territory would have been a huge oil greening country that would shake up the three continents of natural gas and oil markets from the vast Russian continent to part of North America and a powerhouse that would dominate the Earth's gold market. The Russian Empire and its successor, the Soviet Russia, often claimed to be their territory whether to set it back in order to reclaim Alaska own in the political sphere. There is also the possibility that a territorial conflict between Russia and the United States will begin. While the U.S. gained the advantage of deploying an army in the U.S. and mainland Canada to engage in ground warfare, the U.S. would have been in contact with Russia across the western U.S. mainland with Canada instead of Alaska, which would have changed a lot in the Cold War. It would have had a big impact on Canada, but if Alaska continued to remain in Russian territory, Canada, which has a very low population density and is difficult to monitor its borders, will be conscripted as a conscription and instead of the loose neighboring relationship between the United Kingdom and the United States, it may have support from a border from a buffer between Russia and the United States and the United Kingdom on the ties with the United States, which will protect Canada from Russia instead of the United Kingdom may have become closer. Ironically, Secretary of State Seward, the protagonist of the treaty, was nearly assassinated at the time of the assassination of President Lincoln two years ago. If Seward died at the time, it is likely that there would have been no Alaska treaty. If that were the case, history now might not have been the center of the United States. Then I find more useful content next time. Thank you for watching and please subscription and likely button and push the like button and see you next time.